<laughs> Good morning. Welcome back to Why in the Morning. My name is Joy Mochache. You are watching the Y254 channel, and this is specifically the health show. And so, you guys, I've posted some questions I want you guys to talk to us about, answer us as we're having this discussion. And the way you can do that is through our social media handles. That's on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, that's Y254 channel. And on Instagram, it's Y254 underscore channel. I can be found in Joy underscore channel. Today, we have a guest that is focusing on the ear, particularly mosquito, hezy. Yes, what you are using to listen to us. Yeah, that's exactly what we're talking about today. And his name is Mr. Isaac Wahome. He's based in Kimadi House, and he'll tell us the name of his clinic and exactly uh, the kind of focus, sorry, the kind of practice he focuses on. Kariboni Sana, join me in meeting him. Welcome, Thank sir. you, Joy. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, my name is Isaac Wahome. Yeah. I practice at Texter Hearing Center in uh, Kimadi House. Uh -huh. And uh, it really is a great privilege to come and uh, talk about the hearing. Uh, which is a very important tool when it comes to communication and uh, you know, <laughs> yes. talking. Yes. Hearing is so important yeah. that uh, we can never ignore at this age and time. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Because we can't have this conversation unless we're hearing each other it, or ex exactly. using some kind of sign language. Exactly. Okay. And you know, as you look at my practice, basically uh, is helping out on people who have lost hearing. And you yeah. know, in Africa alone, more than you know, 8 million have lost hearing. In the world, close to 466 million people have lost uh, their hearing, have Hold disabled hearing loss. Could you state loss. those figures again? That was interesting. Yeah. In Africa... So the WHO actually says that uh, 466 million people have lost hearing worldwide. Yeah. And in Africa alone is like 9 million people with hearing loss. Wow. Children, if you talk about children, Every 200,000 children who are born with are born with hearing loss in Africa. That oh means goodness, like sad. two out of you know 100 children have hearing loss, which is a huge uh, is, is a huge deal. And uh, when you are talking about young people, it, it's it's really a big impact because of uh, factors that like noise and other things that we shall talk about, of course that okay. uh, can lead to hearing loss. I see. Yeah, I so see. it's really uh, an important topic to talk about in our community today mm. and in the world that we are living today and here in Kenya. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah. And that's wonderful. It sounds like you're well-versed in your area, but yeah. uh, well, whilst we were talking, you told me that you've been practicing general medicine for mm -hmm. about 25 years. Mm -hmm. And um, after that, you decided to specialize in, uh, oh. in the ear. Okay. May I ask why the interest in the ear? Why not? Um, because I know ENT is ear, mm -hmm. um, the nose, ah. and the throat. Okay. And sometimes when doctors open a practice, they okay. focus on all of them. Okay. But you decided to focus on the ear. Okay. What was it about the ear that you um, that drew your interest. Okay. So if you look at uh, basically generally in medicine is helping out and uh, in ENT I mean, practiced before like you said it's just ear, nose and throat but you look at the ear which is a really a tiny organ mm -hmm. that is so important that it reflects you know the emotions and the hearts and everything that goes through here to the heart. So if you look at people who have lost hearing and they've become disabled, they can't hear anymore, you know, these are kind of special people uh, that are either stigmatized, you know, they are people who are neglected uh, from their communities. And, uh, you know, if you look at majority of people, for me, it's children, pregnant women, wow. and, you know, the old elderly people. Mm -hmm who if they lose hearing they mm. lose contact with their family members That's right. you know with, with their communities so yeah. there's that detachment that is there with a person with a hearing loss so for me my focus is basically to try you know with together with the team and other people to bring on these people and reconnect them back to their community that's really one of the passions that moves me Mm. It was hearing. That's wonderful. Yeah, That's yeah. wonderful. And yeah. passion driven means I'm sure you'll you'll get to achieve that. And yeah. now we can focus more about mm -hmm. um, the reason why mm -hmm. we are here. Because okay. we're here to talk specifically about hearing and how we can educate people about it okay. and also spread some awareness about it and also reduce the number of hearing losses. The reason why I pointed out the statistics that you uh, said in the beginning is yeah. because I feel like those numbers are quite large. Really? Yeah. And I feel like um, we need to find a way to prevent these numbers. Yeah. And before we can talk about prevention, mm -hmm. maybe we can talk about causes. Yeah. 
Yeah, and uh, as we're talking, you guys do remember, hashtag why in the morning, hashtag help on Monday, and do go on our Facebook and our Twitter and talk to us and answer our questions or post your own questions yeah. to Mr. Isaac Wahome and to myself. Yeah. And so uh, let's just go back to what we're discussing. The causes yeah. of hearing loss. Mm -hmm. What's the largest and biggest, most common one mm -hmm. that people need to know? So basically the causes, uh, they're categorized like the three commonest categorization and the simplest categorization of hearing loss is, uh, one is what we call the conductive hearing loss, which means is the mechanical blockage of sound from the, you know, the outer ear going to the eardrum. Mm. Uh, because the ear is basically, you know, the easiest way I can say is categorized into three categ into three parts. The outer part, and then you have the middle part, and then the inner part that is basically uh, uh, when you're talking about the nerve. So the one type is a conductive type, which is a mechanical type of loss, and this one is caused by either, you know, a foreign body in the ear, wax in the ear, mm. uh, you know, swellings in the ear, and sometimes some kind of, you know, tumors or swellings in the ear. Mm. And then the, the other type on the middle part of the, uh, of the ear, sometimes you can have some fluid inside there as a result of cold or something like that. Uh -huh. uh, and then we have the inner part which carries now the nerve the nerve that transmits sounds from the outer part to the brain. Mm. And that is a sensory type of uh, hearing loss. And that one can be caused by many things, including drugs, including genetic problems, including, uh, you know, trauma, mm. uh, like, you know, like just... just right, trauma to the ear or... A trauma or even just falling, like, you know, accidents. Wow. You know, it's oh. very common, like nowadays, all of us are going on border border. Yes. And we are told to wear a helmet for our own safety. And you know, so many people have lost their hearing because of just, you know, falling down wow. on a roadside. Uh -huh. Even just the motorbike or the bike, the, the bicycles themselves, just right. falling down and get trauma to the ear and it displo displays very tiny hairs inside there. Mm. Or even just in the part of uh, like the bone part, the bone part of the hair of the ear. Mm. So you definitely lose your hearing from that. So the causes are very many of them, but of course, genetic plays a really big role. Genetic yeah. play a big role in hearing. Yeah. I mean, like if you, if one person in your family yes. has hearing loss, yes. there's a chance that somebody else can have hearing loss in the family. I see. So that's basically a big chunk and of it can, hearing And it can be passed down from like parents to children. For oh, yeah. example, if yeah. a parent has um, is uh, has hearing loss or yeah. is deaf, yeah. it can be passed down to their yeah, child. Yeah, it can run through the lineage of uh, you know mm -hmm. people with the hearing loss. Right. I mean like families with hearing loss. Right. And then the other cause basically is very common in pregnant women, either during pregnancy or after uh, <laughs> or it's just slightly after you know pregnancy or during delivery uh, which is a really common thing that we are seeing nowadays that uh, you know kids are born either asphyxics or uh, hypoxic and they score badly and they tend to lose their hearing you know after that and nowadays we are even we'll talk about the management of these children that are born uh, deaf yeah from the beginning Wow. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And and in that case where mm -hmm. genetics have played a part, yeah. it's quite difficult for um, that parent to even try and prevent. Yeah. It's quite difficult, yes. Mm -hmm. And so let's say, uh, now that we've covered genetics playing quite a part, mm -hmm. and that cannot be controlled. Yeah. Now that we're out of genetics, what are some of the other ways people can get hearing losses you have mentioned? Uh, yes. But then um, the pregnancy one actually has piqued my interest. Yeah. I don't think I've heard that before. This is news to me yeah so this you is know, news so in pregnancy uh infection during pregnancy sometimes even trauma during pregnancy and uh, the, the the biggest role is the medication during pregnancy because right. people get sick and you know they use some medications that okay. can hurt you know the unborn baby mm -hmm. and that can cause uh hearing loss and mm -hmm. during delivery we are saying that for uh, when you have prolonged you know labor uh you can tend to have some hearing loss just because b based on that and uh so really pregnancy 
is is so important and especially in Kenya when you're talking about beyond zero and other things exactly. in terms of you know reducing the mortality exactly and I'm so pregnancy. glad you brought that in I think one one of the most important things to talk about is every child who is born should be tested for hearing and we can do that you know immediately a, a, a baby or a newborn is born Mm. Immediately we have a newborn, we can do some hearing tests for that and we can actually ascertain whether they are hearing loss. And you know with hearing loss, the earlier you treat it, the better it is because children tend to, tend to speak from what they hear. In right. other words, children are like a big bucket, so mm. they just consume words and then right. they speak later. Like a sponge. Yeah, they mm. just absorb all that. And mm. you realize that most of the children that we, we, we meet them, uh, they tend or parents tend to bring children to hearing clinics when it is too late, when they cannot be able to speak. So which is too late and uh, we are advising the, you know, the public is that get your child tested as early as possible. Get your child tested. Yeah. And, oh, and whilst we're doing this test, because sometimes we go to, and before we talk about that, please mm -hmm. you guys, I need you guys to uh, go to our Facebook and actually respond to some of the questions I posted there as well as post some of your own from Mr. Isaac Wahome. It's going to be an interesting discussion. Yeah. Let's go on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when it comes to <laughs> the chat, <laughs> the discussion which you're having just now, uh -huh. uh, sorry, that slipped my mind for some, uh -huh. for some reason. Yeah. You know, when you're talking about yeah, prevention of uh, hearing loss and when you're talking about uh, testing for newborns, uh, testing, that's yeah, what we're testing, talking about. I, yeah, you're yeah. talking about testing of newborns. I was talking about testing of newborns, mm -hmm. and um, you know how sometimes you test the whole body. Yeah. And it's true, most of the time we do test our newborns and we make sure we're, ah, uh -huh. oh, is everything okay? The yeah. chest, the yeah, lungs, yeah. Yeah. oh, the heart, everything, uh -huh. you know, the feet working fine. Yeah. Absolutely everything is checked. Yeah. And then people just kind of forget to check everything up here. Yeah. Maybe eyesight will be checked. Yeah. Um, but then the ear may be neglected in most times. Mm -hmm. And I feel like um, we need to kind of push mm -hmm. that, that when you're getting your newborn checked, yeah. um, just to be sure that everything's going to be perfectly sure. fine with their hearing. Yeah. Some of the things you can do is get them tested mm -hmm. at, in their ears as well. Yeah. And not just the vital lungs. Yeah, I know yeah, they're yeah. vital, but everything needs to be checked out and looked at. Yeah. And you know, when we're, once this happens, and unfortunately in some cases, someone is left and they completely lose their hearing yeah after they've lost their hearing mm -hmm. is there a particular scientific name for it and if not um, what are some of the instruments that you use mm -hmm. um, what at what how can I say the variation of them because I, I see sometimes um, and there's a actually those are forum I attended at the at the Kenya school for deaf uh -huh. and I could like all the some of the hearing aids what so different kinds of variation and I was like yeah. I was like I wonder why they're so different of course they can't all be the same but yeah. maybe you can touch on that sure you know so when you're talking about management of hearing loss you know the 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 the, the first type that I talked about the conductive type basically can be managed either surgically or medicine or with medications you know simple things like wax you know can be removed and you get you gain your hearing there, you know, immediately. Mm. Uh, there's some sudden type of hearing loss that can be treated with medications and you, you know, it resolves. But now when you have hearing loss that is permanent, because hearing loss can either be temporary or can it be uh, permanent. So the permanent type is the one that basically involves the inner ear or it involves the, the nerve. So this type of hearing loss basically requires rehabilitation. And one of the ways we rehabilitate is by giving, you know, listening devices. And uh, the commonest type of listening devices are two. One of them is a hearing aid and a cochlear implant. And rightly, like you said, when you're talking about a, a hearing aid, there are so many types of hearing aids. Uh, some of them are put behind the ear, around here. Some of them just, uh, you know, mm. outside here and some are inside the, the ear. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that is the kind of variation you have. And yeah. when you're talking about the hearing aid, you have to look, you have to be tested first a hearing problem and then we are certain okay what level of hearing problem you have mm. and then from there we can select and then from there we can select which uh which hearing aid we are going to give you and there's the technique and the technology 
that we have nowadays is so smart and is so good that you know hearing aid nowadays <sighs> we are calling them you know they are cool they are cool things to wear because they yeah. they can track your your blood pressure nowadays they can no. track your you know your sleeping partner pattern the, you know your general health because hearing loss affects your general health yeah. It's, you know, in uh, elderly people, we say you can have cognitive decline, like, you know, memory loss or dementia. And uh, one of the ways that, uh, you know, scientists have come up with is we, we are able now to track your brain. We are able to track how active you are and, uh, you know, your blood pressure, your general health with a hearing aid. You know, so nowadays hearing aids are becoming so cool and with a lot of technology. Uh, previously, the hearing aids we have, they wouldn't control the environment, <laughs> yeah. environmental noise and all that. And they're so cool. These gadgets are so cool really? yeah. that, uh, you know, they have come in a, in a big way uh -huh. to help out in uh, adults and in children. Yes. And in children, one of the ways that they're helping out is, you know, in classroom, they can be able to reduce all the background noises and they can be able ah. to concentrate with the teachers and the, the, the hearing aid oh yeah um, reduces background noise yeah. so that the child can concentrate on the one voice of the teacher yeah. so basically wow. what the hearing aid does is that it amplifies everything okay and then it narrows down like you know like a V Okay. narrows down to somebody who is speaking because the hearing uh -huh. aid can detect when we have noise and mm -hmm. when somebody is speaking for mm -hmm. instance when you're when you're talking mm -hmm. when you're talking you're talking and then you're pausing in between mm -hmm. but when there's noise it's just like ba -ba 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 -ba, continuous kind of you know noise so the hearing aid will be able to tell okay this is a human being speaking mm -hmm. and this is noise and it will reduce the noise mm -hmm. and concentrate on the human being that is speaking that is so this is how so cool about the now hearing i see aid. what you're calling you cool that yeah. is pretty cool <laughs> that's amazing really, yeah. and you know um i'm not trying to say i wish i could not but but how many times have we thought i wish i could just drown out all the background noise uh -huh. Uh, just when you're walking in the streets, it's so much. Uh, you're right, it's yeah. just like, oh man, if I could only silence everything. Yeah. But you know, that's um, that's a whole different way of looking at things. And yeah. I think that is very cool yeah. that this uh, technology is working in such a way, mm -hmm. especially to focus on children. Yeah. Because being in school, uh -huh. Sometimes you are, I don't know, some children are not concentrating too well. Yeah. Some are talkative, yeah. some are whispering. Yeah. And, and if you're wearing the hearing aid, it might pick it up. And so the technology has made it so well yeah. and cool, as you had said, yeah, yeah, to yeah. the point that yeah. it drowns everything out yeah. and this child can focus on what, they're, yeah. uh, what the teacher is saying. And um, when it comes to, sorry, it looked like you had something to say. Yeah, I mean like, sure, uh, go ahead. when you're talking about uh, the devices that we are using now in school and streaming, what you call live streaming of the teacher and so on, uh, you realize that a child with a hearing loss, they will never, they will never concentrate with the environment mm. because they are in their own world. They are isolated. You know, wow. some of them have this stigma and fear within themselves. Yes, yes. And uh, they just live in their own world. Mm. And when you put a device like a hearing aid and they can hear the signals back, you're bringing back to the community, you know, the, I, I mean like for instance, I had one child with one side who uh, he couldn't hear from one side and the other side was okay. Mm -hmm. And when we tested, after we tested the hearing loss, a hearing and then we were, you know, the mother asked innocently, why didn't you say that you couldn't hear from this other ear and the child was like, I thought that's how we're supposed to hear. Mm. And you see, this is what happens. Wow. That's what they believe. They believe like everybody, everybody. Is, is not hearing. Yeah. And they're just talking. They're just looking at their lip. You know, they just lip read. Right. You know, and they develop that skill so well that they can actually tell what you're about to say or what you're saying just by reading your lips. And, you know, mothers don't understand that, that the child, they start seeing some signs and symptoms like, probably this child is ignoring me, mm. the TV is quite loud, mm. you know, the child likes r loud, you know, environments, yeah. most of the time is not concentrating mm. and when all I those kind of things. When I call him, I have to call yeah. him several times. Yeah. I mean, like, they, they are beaten most of the time. You, oh, why can't you hear? I'm calling you. And you just can't blame anything else. It's just hearing loss. It's, it's a huge sad. problem. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty sad. Yeah. And most of the thing, um, the reason why actually I absolutely love the health show yeah. is because everything that we discuss yes. 
opens people's minds up because what you've said, there's a kid being beaten up by the mom because the mom doesn't get the kid is deaf. Unona. Yeah. And something so simple as that, yeah. this is what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. We're trying to let people know that, look, you mm -hmm. might want to check mm -hmm. deeper. You might want to, you know, stop caning somebody and let them check uh, their hearing checked out. If yes. they're really not hearing you and you're calling them a hundred times, sure. you might want to go and check that out instead of letting it out on your child. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for doing that. Thank you for coming to share with us. Sure. And as we continue, mm -hmm. You guys, I'm waiting for your responses, Tafadali. Isaac Wahome wants to hear your questions and he wants to answer them straight to you. And if you don't, Mazet Tapata until next Monday. Cindy, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yes. But let's go on. Um, so, you know, there's something you told me when we we're talking once again mm -hmm. that here in Kenya, mm -hmm. the practice for the focus on the ear is so low. Yeah. You said that there is only three mm -hmm. in the whole country. Mm -hmm. And in Nairobi, count, Nairobi County mm -hmm. itself, yeah. there's one, yeah. which happens to be you. Uh -huh. Yes, um, I'm wondering, it seems like if that was a business, uh -huh. I, I mean, success, eh? Because <laughs> there's no competition. You're the only one providing a certain service. I'm sure, you know, um, I can't say that this competition is there. And why Why aren't people studying on this? What's, what's the reason? Are people not interested in the air? Are they too fearful about it? Or is there not enough um, information and awareness about it? Really, uh, you know, hearing is a teamwork. And uh, we have like, you know, we have the ENT surgeons who manage, you know, the medical, you know, and the surgical aspect of it. And then we have the ENT clean courses, we have the ENT nurses, we have, uh, you know, the audiologists, we have the audiology technician. And now where I fall is a hearing instrument practitioner. Hearing instrument so, practitioner. Yeah, which means, you know, like in the country, we are only three of us who have been trained. Me being here in, uh, in, in Nairobi and the two guys are basically international guys. Uh, you know, we are really few but we we are working and it's a growing industry it's a growing industry and hearing loss it's not well known it's not like malaria it's not like pneumonia you know people with hearing loss they get this problem and they hide it's a because it's painless nobody can see whether you have you know a wound or something about hearing loss so most people just suffer in silence Oh, wow. Yeah, they just suffer in silence because it's painless yeah. and it's a disability that you can see. And even in, even the cost, even the services that are provided, there are very few places where you can go for a hearing check. And, uh, you know, I, I, it's a field that really needs a lot of public awareness, mm. especially in our country here in Kenya. We really need to have a lot of awareness on our hearing problem I see and for young people mm. you know we'll talk about young people but uh, it's an industry that affects all of us mm -hmm. in one way or another yeah. either by people who are surrounding us right. or people who have hearing loss because right. hearing loss basically in itself it has some stages there are people who when they have a hearing loss and you tell them they deny they just coil up and deny there's no way I can lose my hearing there's no way I can you know I can I cannot be hearing. Because this essentially now makes them, yeah. unfortunately, disabled. Yeah. I mean and like nobody wants to be labeled that. Exactly. Yeah. You know, like in our community, you, you become so stigmatized. And we are really, you know, with WHO and other organizations in Kenya, you know, we, we're trying to, to sensitize people that if you have a hearing problems, check your hearing. You know, the WHO came up with a brilliant tool that you can do your hearing test at home with your phone, just download the application from the WHO, have your hearing, and once you have a problem with your hearing loss, mm. then you need to look for a designated uh, hearing care prof uh, professional okay. to have your hearing checked, and probably you can be treated. Okay. It could be just wax. Mm. You know, common problems. It could like be just wax, yeah. Or just a foreign body, or mm. a kid who has just put a rubber or a pencil mm. or, or a piece of paper inside there, or oh, yeah. this kind of something thing. shouldn't, yeah. yeah foreign body like you yeah. said and you know I want us to look at these comments but before we look at them mm -hmm. uh, there's one thing I want to bring up okay. because uh, the questions that we ask mm -hmm. you know <laughs> there's this in the I think it's in the 80s was it yeah. there's uh, these rock bands uh -huh. the upcoming rock bands mm -hmm. like when when rock used to be rock oh my goodness, like yeah. with the with a screaming and yeah. with the craziness uh -huh. and 
attending a concert, I, I used to see people like doing this to their ears just to make sure their ears are still there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of rock stars were being asked, how do you go through this? Like, yeah. you're going through this you're, you're all the time, every month, a couple of times a month. Yeah. And aren't you worried for your hearing? Mm -hmm. And they used to kind of surround this whole thing. And even parents used to tell us, don't listen to rock music, it'll yeah. spoil your ears. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to focus on one genre. Yeah, okay. We're going to talk about the loudness of music. And okay. if my producers can now put up the question, mm -hmm. put up the questions please mm -hmm. um, we can talk about now uh, the, because most of the time I use easy to not okay everywhere you go in Nairobi everyone yeah. has earphones in their ear you're not going to walk without earphones yeah. if you do you're not cool or uh -huh. you're just boring uh -huh. am I you <laughs> I don't know sure. everyone has an earphone in their ear with music mm -hmm. people um, maybe just listen to their news mm -hmm. and sometimes when you share an earphone with somebody you're like hey Mazio make a loud and you're like <laughs> ah, ski kama iko loud. Yeah. then I'm like uh -huh, uh -huh. a sign uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. can we please talk about some of the things to me, is yeah. music and loud noises and uh, nothing against people who go clubbing, yeah. but constant clubbing or DJs with constant earphones in and constant music all the time. Mm -hmm. Is there any effect oh. to that or is there no effect? Sure. So, I mean, like, noise, w we call it noise induced hearing loss, is a huge problem. Noise induced hearing yeah. loss, yeah. yeah. And it can either like you say, it can either be an the occupational problem or a social problem. problem. Occupational for people who are working in industries oh, that yes. are really noisy. Oh yeah, factories. Yeah, factories and so on. Mm. They, they tend to lose their hearing just from work. And then, you know, the social places. Mm. Could you please matatus. hold your microphone in the middle? Yeah. So the, the, the matatus, yeah. you know, the, the, the clubs and so on. So just the moment you go inside there, you you tend to be in an environment that is noisy and as you the more you stay there you d when you come out from that an environment you realize that oh looks <laughs> like my hearing has sort of gone down yeah so we that one we usually call it a temporary shift you know like your ear has, has to adjust to that noise mm. and then when you come out you know your hearing goes down mm -hmm. now there are people who have lost instantly their hearing from you know loud music no. Yeah, re you just lose like that. Because, you know, there are very tiny, tiny hairs inside the ear that, you know, it's like, it's like a wire. They keep bending. Every time there's loud sound, they bend. Every time they, they do like that. So that bending basically breaks them, mm. breaks, breaks the hairs. And once you get that, you get a permanent type of hearing loss. Mm -hmm. So you, 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 you okay. just lose your hearing like that. You lose your hearing like that. Yeah, I and it's permanent. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. And you've heard some of the ways you, you, we lose our hearing. And right now, I want to get back to you guys. Our viewers want to talk to you and to answer some of the questions. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Mr. Wahome. Thank yeah. you so much for being here, because some of these I'm sure I can't get through. But let's see. Uh -huh. um, we have Mr. Steve Kihiu saying, watching from Moranga, I rarely use earphones, and I clean my ears using water. And I think the question that was asked is, what's safer to use between water mm -hmm. and uh, earbuds to oh clean your ears? Which one is safer? What do we, how do we clean so there nicely? So for us, we say, don't put anything inside the ear. The only thing that can fit in your ear is your big toe or your elbow. Oh. In other words, what it means, Nothing. don't do anything. Don't put anything. Because the ear is a conveyor belt. It just does like self-cleaning. It removes wax from or dirt from inside there to outside here. So the only thing you can clean is the out part with a, like a cotton. Mm. I mean like with a, with a towel. A wet piece of towel. Just, just, just outside here. Don't mm. put anything inside there except your big toe. That's what we usually so say. So the way we used to, you know, my mom used to put me to sleep by putting my head on her lap, my yeah. body here, yeah. and my head would be here. Yeah. And then she'd tell me, okay, it's baby, don't move. Yeah. And then she'd do this, yeah. and I was gone in like two minutes. I was asleep. Sure. <laughs> it was the best feeling. Yeah. And there are many people, you see, the close their eyes, yeah, like, yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, of course. So I mean, that is wrong. Yeah. I mean, like, that feeling of putting inside there. I've seen so many people who have pushed their eardrum I inside there, sometimes accidentally being pushed. They come in the clinic with, you know, a retained part of the cotton bud and so on. And, uh, you know, Ouch. the problem with that is because of itchiness. And itchiness what is like a cycle. You start it, you don't stop. You just feel like you want to go yeah, on, and on, yeah. and on and on and on. And that sweetness, you know, that kind of a thing. And yeah. You know, <laughs> that's what happens. And uh -huh. uh, we usually say, is don't do anything like that. Mm -hmm. Just leave it. If you feel like your ear is blocked, if you feel itchy, there's a problem. 
you need to see your ENT doctor mm. and usishinde hivi na na mavifunguo matchbox like pens vibiriti people yeah. put all sorts of things in the, their ears yeah the pens <laughs> are the commonest things the pens yeah. yeah they injure that they get infections after that hmm. you know they put all sorts of things and then the other question there is about the connections between the ear and the nose. Yes, that's from Mr. Geoffrey Mshayui. Thank you, Mr. Geoffrey Mshayui. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Definitely. There's a connection between the nose and the ear. There's a tube that connects the ear with the nose that we call the stitching tube. And basically, the function is just to equalize the pressure between the, in, in, you know, the inner part or the middle part and the external part. So that is the connection that is there. And for children, and uh, some, sometimes adult is very important because sometimes fluid that is retained inside there, mm -hmm. what we call middle, uh, middle ear effusion, can cause hearing loss. Mm. It's very common, especially with children who uh, have big adenoids or things like those ones, they get fluid retained there and they have, to done, they have to be done maybe a surgical procedure or maybe treated so that that fluid can be drained and they can regain their, their hearing. Mm. So sometimes you realize if you're climbing, you know, a you're climbing a mountain or you're going on a high altitude, your ear is blocked. It's yeah. basically that part that is collapsed. Oh, it has yeah. collapsed. Yeah. And then as you're coming down from that area, there's it's, like a pain. Yeah, mm. because, you know, the eardrum moves inside there. So ah. that movement of the eardrum, because that collapse is what puts the eardrum inside wow. and it causes some excruciating pain, you mm. know. Interesting how yeah. the body works just mm. so the body can work. Yeah, it's, it's so organized. Everything is... Mm. God Thank has made you, the God. ear and the <laughs> nose so organized. Yes. Yeah. It's too deep. Yeah. Skylar Music. Uh-huh. Asubuhi nikienda job na jioni back home. He's saying earphone use because we're asking how long do you wear your earphones? Because there's some all the time. Yeah. All the time. So for the earphones... One of the most important thing is the time, mm -hmm. the duration of time you're using, the type of earphones that you're using, and the loudness that you, you, you're getting into. Because okay. the more... The length, the, the length, type. The type. Uh -huh. uh, and the volume. And the volume that you're using. Uh -huh. So if you're using high volumes for long duration of time, it means that you start getting gradual hearing loss. You know, as we get old, naturally, we lose our hearing. But now the more you use your, your earphones or loud noise, the more you, you know, it's exacerbate, you know, that hearing will start to mm. come out Becomes worse. quickly. Yes. Yeah. Quickly. I see. Yeah. Okay. And, um, you know, I don't know what to do because I use earphones as well. I can't lie. Yeah. There are times when I'd like to listen to music and block everything out. Yeah. Could you maybe advise me on safe use of earphones? Yeah. So one of the safe we, way we, uh, we use, uh, <coughs> sometimes we encourage people to, to, to download applications like uh, one of the applications called uh, Hear Angel, even for Hear, children. Hear Angel. Yeah. Wow. So these are applications that they control how much time you're spending on your phone or your laptop or your iPad. And uh, they can tell you sometimes, okay, uh, you need a break. And mm. sometimes they cut off that uh, just switch whatever, it. Uh, switch it off so that you can have a break. And sometimes now, all the manufacturers are mandated, you know, to make sure that they, they, they make you aware that <coughs> if you exceed a certain volume, for example, if you exceed 80%, huh. then they give you that warning, okay, this one is might be harmful. It even says there on the phone, yeah. listening at higher volume yeah, it's would harmful. be harmful. Yeah. Exactly. So we usually say 80, the rule of 80, it should be less than 80%, always, always. Yeah. And you should spend you know, very few hours down there, maybe, you know, not more than two hours. Mm. Or so, and you should always have, like, a break so in between, so on. So Mr. Skyler Music <coughs> has the right idea. He may yeah. listen in the morning when yeah. he's going to work yeah. and in the evening when he's coming home. And that should be okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and uh, the type, I'm interested about that. Why, why is the type, uh, um, why does the type of earphone play a part in one, hearing loss? One of them is the quality of the hearing, the, the earphones. Number two <coughs> okay. is, you know, wow. the earphones, the way we put them. You know, we like to put them quite inside there so that we can feel the bass. <laughs> and you know, the closer <laughs> you, you know put... You know as well. Yeah, and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and the closer you are there. You know, the cochlea, the cochlea is like an amusement part. It goes round like two thirds. And the first beat is where you have the bass. And the apex part is where you have this small, you know, high frequency kind of uh, uh, sounds. And we like, by the time 
it reaches to the high frequency. You're using the low frequencies, and the low frequencies is the base. So it means you start <laughs> killing the high frequencies uh -huh. and before the, the base. So people tend to have the high frequency die quite early. Yeah. And the, what we call the high frequency hearing loss, very common with elderly people. That's what they lose. And the more you use earphones and the more you push inside there and the more you like the bass, the more you lose your high frequencies. The one that I get scared about is, um, you know, in the matatus, mm -hmm. um, there's, some, there's a way that you can place the microphones, yeah. sorry, microphones mm -hmm. <laughs> the speakers, yes. in such a way that they're not going to harm yeah. you, you, um, your hearing. But yeah. then, yeah. like next to your ear yeah, 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 on yeah. the corner. One yeah. is here, yeah. one is over here, and yeah. then you're just hearing some sharp, loud. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, if that's your ride every morning, maybe that's oh, your favorite. Yeah, um, yeah. There might be some kind of effect that you get from that, as well as from the makangas who are there on a daily yes. basis, yes. morning till evening. Yes. Um, is it roots? Rungai with the blasting music and mm -hmm. so I think we need to look at we need to look close to home mm -hmm. and kind of look at the things we're doing on a daily basis sure. that can affect our hearing because sure. hearing loss is not that far yeah you know and it's a thin line between you're okay today you're disabled tomorrow yeah. and yes that's it yeah. and so and like you said you can lose your hearing like that just from loud music sure. and so some of the things we need to do right now are, are to kind of as we wind up yeah. let our people know um, some of the tips okay. to keep hearing uh, at the top, okay. to keep our hearing at the best, okay. so we don't keep pardoning people like, hmm, what you say, like, yeah, pardon yeah, yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, una to vizuri. Yeah. And you can hear even someone whispering to you. Okay. What are some of the tips and how to keep that longevity in good hearing? Okay. So one of the tips is that uh, at least have an earplug Okay. Every time you go to a matatu or a club, oh, okay, I'll just do that. very simple. I mean, like you, you love going to the club. You go, you like, you have to use the matatu. Mm. The easiest way is to have an earplug. It reduces the sound mm -hmm. or the noise. Mm -hmm. Number two is that have your hearing regularly checked at least once a year if you're working in an occupational place that is noisy. Mm -hmm. Uh, and of course, that is a requirement by law in Kenya mm -hmm. that uh, all the places that are noisy has to be governed by some, you know, right. yeah, some okay. regulations. Yes, of course. Uh, the other thing is that uh, you know, uh, stop. Uh, people should stop this habit of you know, self cleaning and putting <laughs> things inside things yeah. inside the ear. Putting, yeah. you guys, I have to mention this again. Yeah, stop yeah. putting keys in your ears. Oh yeah. Stop putting pens. keys, pens, and yeah. matchboxes. Yeah. Even earbuds, you shouldn't be putting them in yeah, your ears. Yeah, Just yeah. leave your, pu your poor little ears alone. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, like, that is something that is very important. And mm -hmm. then we are talking about pregnant mothers and, you know, newborns that they have to be done their, their hearing tests uh, as early as possible. Mm -hmm. And then if you realize suddenly you have lost your hearing, go to your healthcare profession, mm -hmm. especially the ENTs. Mm -hmm. What about the sudden ringing? Yeah. Sometimes there's a ring, which yeah. yeah. So should, you should that also take you to go to check? Of course, to, to get you checked? know, ringing, ringing in, in in the in the field of ENT, we call it tinnitus. Is a sign you that something tinnitus. Tinnitus. Yeah, it's a sign that something is wrong. It's like when you have you know high blood pressure, you'll have headaches. So one of the things that every person with a noisy or ringing or buzzing noise in their ears. Probably there's, there's a problem with the hearing. Maybe your hearing is going down and you need, you know, your hearing checked. Yes. These are very common symptoms that comes with hearing. Sometimes if you have pain in the ear, blocked noses, and all those kind of things, they need to be managed so that you have better hearing. Mm -hmm. If I have seen that, you know, bosses who fire their, you know, the, the secretaries and their employees mm -hmm. because, because, you know, they the, the, the secretaries or the people who are working around them, they're speaking softly and they can't hear mm. and they're like, you know, they're told something mm. and they didn't hear and mm. they're like, you didn't tell me this. So at least when you're speaking loudly or when they're telling people to repeat after them, have your hearing checked. Have your hearing checked. Yeah. Um, you have advised us wonderfully, Mr. Wahome. Thank I'd like for you to tell us, uh, to tell our viewers where they can find you, just okay. in case um, we need our hearing instruments or in case there are viewers who uh, have people mm -hmm. that need these hearing instruments. Exactly where are you based? So you can come at uh, Kemadi House 7th floor. Uh, that's where Dexter Hearing Center is. Dexter and Hearing Center. Yeah, we can check your hearing. We can advise you. We can counsel you for those people who have already their hearing loss. 
and uh, they have been told they need a hearing instrument like a hearing aid, you can come you there, can we can discuss that. and mm. we, can, we can help you out. Okay. For newscasters like you guys, mm. we can do the ear custom ear mold earphones. Yeah. Really? Yeah, really, yeah. Hi, we'll talk after this interview. We shall yeah. talk. Yeah, right. That is very interesting. Yeah. We do have to wind up this wonderful discussion. I had a blast actually talking to Miss Isaac Wahome. That was great. And thank you so much, you guys, for actually interacting with us. I love you people for that. We shall be here next Monday at 7.30 sharp to do another health segment on another different topic. Yeah. Thank you, sir, for coming through. Thank you. Upcoming right now is Hilda Wadidi with Youth and Politics. My name is Joy Mochache.